Welcome to the viewers to the 40th edition of uh, Dialogue Session. Today we have a very eminent uh, guest, Mr. J. V. Shishira, who is a very well-known political analyst and commentator. Many of the viewers and readers might be knowing him and seeing him through national television during the election. Uh, welcome, Mr. Shriram. Thank we you, Mr. Sir. It is a pleasure. We are privileged to have you in our show. Yeah. And uh, most likely, it is going to be a cover story in our uh, December 2023 edition of our e-magazine presents. You have been predicting. I have seen that you have predicted almost near perfection in all the five states. And uh, the, what is the vote share of, uh, briefly, can you mention the vote share of the yeah. major political parties? Sure. So let me start with the exchange which went through the poll first time for the initially. Chhattisgarh BJP has received a 46.27% of votes, which is 13.3% more than what they received in 2018. And Congress had received 42.23% of votes, which is basically 0.81% less than what they received in 2018. And as far as seat is concerned, BJP had got 54 seats, 39 seats more than what they received in the last election. And 35 seats Congress is 33 seats less than the last election. And GGP, the local party, received one vote, one seat, sorry. Next, if we take the case of Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh, BJP's vote share is 48.55, which is 7.53% more than last time. Congress is 40.40, which is 0.49 percentage less than what they received in the last election. As far as seat is concerned, uh, BJP had won 163 seats, which is 54 seats more than the last election. And Congress won 66 seats, which is 48 seats less than the uh, last election. And the local Bharat Adivasi party had uh, received only one seat. Now, coming to the next state of Rajasthan, uh, Bharat Janata Party had received around 41.69 percentage of votes, which is 2.92 percent more than last election. And Congress had received 39.53, which is 0.23 uh, percent more than last time, resulting in 115 seats for uh, BJP, 69 for Congress, one seat for the Congress ally uh, Rashtriya Lokdal Party, and then Bharat Adivasi Party uh, got three seats. Bahujan Samaj Party got two seats and Rashtriya Lok Tantric Party received one seat. Now coming to Telangana. Telangana uh, state uh, Congress was the winning party here and uh, Congress had uh, received 39.40 percentage of votes which was 11% more than last election resulting in 64 seats 45 seats more than the last election. CPI got one seat, which is an ally of Congress. BR has received 37.35 percentage of votes, which was 9.55 percent less than last election. And 39 seats it won, 49 seats lesser than the last election. Bharatiya Janata Party received 13.90 percentage of votes, which is 6.92 percent more than last time. And eight seats, won eight seats, which is seven seats more than the last election. And MIM won seven seats. Uh, by securing 2.22 percentage of votes. So this is a broad seat share and the vote share of all the major political parties in these uh, four state elections. Uh, sir, uh, what were the campaign strategies of major political parties? I mean, BJP and Congress in the major uh, states. What was the things that were factors? So uh, you mentioned only two of the major focus daily. Okay. As far as Congress is concerned uh, in the Chhattisgarh, they were going with the phase of Bhupesh Baghel. That was a major thing. They were talking about the welfare schemes promoted by Bhupesh Baghel. As far as BJP is concerned, BJP had won. For the first time, BJP had announced candidates well in advance. It was a very localized campaign, localized election. And first time, we saw Modi ka guarantee. Uh, it was being a rice bowl state. So they said 3,100 rupees we will pay per quintal for one acre. Uh, you know, 21 acres uh, is what they said. Uh, they will be procuring 21 quintals per acre for 3,100 rupees. Apart from the 12,000 rupees uh, for per women for per year was another major hit as far as Chhattisgarh is concerned. As far as uh, Madhya Pradesh is concerned, it was all about Laldi Bena Yojana. Uh, but that was the main focus area to ensure that the women voters were 
got inside as far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned. And Congress uh, did not have a proper campaign strategy in Madhya Pradesh. That is the reason you would see the vote share between Congress and BJP is almost 7 to 8 percent. If they did not have, they had Kamal Nath, uh, who was not a pan Madhya Pradesh leader. There was also a lot of factionalism. So the campaign did not take off as far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned. As far as uh, Rajasthan is concerned, when I look at it, it was again the failure of the incumbent government. Law and order was a major issue because women rape issue was another major issue as far as Rajasthan is concerned. And this was highlighted by the BJP. And as far as campaign strategy of Raj Rajasthan Congress Party is concerned, it is all about LPG cylinder giving it subsidy and 10,000, uh, 12,000 rupees again for the women, they said. And more importantly, if we look at uh, Rajasthan, Rajasthan is a state which alternates between Congress and Bharatiya Janata Party. This has been the tradition for the last 25 years. As a result of which, BJP, without a CM face, they went. But their campaign was effective. And uh, Congress Party did not change a lot of its MLAs. That was again a problem as far as the campaign is concerned. In Telangana, the campaign was very specific as far as uh, Congress Party was concerned. It was all about the rural anger against KCR. The rural people were angry against KCR and they wanted the arrogance of the KCR's family to be taught a lesson. And that was clearly used by the Congress party. At the same time, if you see the BJP, which was actually setting the narrative till the month of, say, January or February of this year, failed in narrative building. And they were very late to hit the campaign trail, which was basically OBC CM or for that matter, Madiga uh, subcategorization. These were the major issues which were there, but it came very late as a result of which it was not able to catch up. But still, they were able to move from one seat to eight seats, which itself is an achievement by itself. BRS party was going to town talking about the Raitu Bandhu schemes and the various welfare and various welfare schemes had actually gone to people. But the anger against KCR, particularly the BRS MLAs, that proved to be <coughs> the undoing as far as the BRS party is concerned. But do you think that, that that Sanadhana issue has played any impact? Nowadays, I see in uh, many of the social media, yeah. Sanadhana issue has played some uh, significant role in the Hindi bit. It has definitely uh, has played a role, particularly in Madhya Pradesh, because it's a Hindutva state and it had played a role. And even in, uh, if you take the case of Chhattisgarh, it's a very soft Hindutva state. Again, there also it played a very important role. So, Sanadana comments made by the Indi bloc uh, ally, DMK, had played a role in the defeat of Congress in all these three states. Uh, sir, the, uh, BJP has put up uh, unknown faces as chief ministers in uh, all the states won by them. Uh, what do you think is the significance? No, I think I will disagree with you. Politely, I will disagree with you. Because in Chhattisgarh, he was a very prominent face. Mm -hmm. He has been in politics since 1989. He has been a two-time MLA, five-time MP and former Union Minister of State and former State Chhattisgarh President and tribal face. <laughs> so, obviously, he is not an unknown face. As far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned, yes. And Rajasthan is concerned, yes. But these two were organizational men. What I hear from them is uh, both uh, Bajadlal Sharma and Mohan Yadav are a hardcore RSS men who were part of the organization and uh, they've been in the unit from 1990s onwards, prominent Bajan Lal Sharma, and he has been a two-time MLA from Ujjain South. So as a result of which, there is a generational change which the BJP is looking for, particularly in the states of MPN in uh, Rajasthan. So that generational change as what has resulted in these new uh, faces. Uh, but although, I, as I said, Chhattisgarh is an old war horse who has come into uh, the CM's reckoning. Probably... Outside of the Hindi heartland, uh, other people may not be knowing uh, the Chhattisgarh CM, but he has been a man who has uh, been committed towards the, uh, you know, uh, Karvapsi, stopping the tribal conversion and those things. He has been playing a very important role. So, he's a prominent leader. Uh, sir, uh, Telangana, uh, Congress has won. Yeah. And what type of an impact it may have on the southern states for Congress? So, see, I think southern states are pretty strong as far as Congress is concerned. Because in Kerala, BJP is not there. In Tamil Nadu, BJP is trying to grow. And in uh, Karnataka, BJP had 
heavily been defeated by Congress. Uh, in Telangana, its victory would certainly mean that Congress will start the 2024 elections, at least in Telangana, with a prominent vote share and also a seat share. That is possible. But in Karnataka, the dynamics are changing because Janata Dal Secular and the BJP is going to get into an alliance, which would be favoring them. As far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, there is anti-incumbency against the DMK government. So we do not know how much of it is going to impact the Indi alliance or is it going to go to ADMK or is it going to translate into some good vote share and probably a few seats for BJP. It's a million dollar question which I don't think anybody will have answer. And as far as Kerala is concerned, the contest is anyway between UDF and LDF because BJP with 12 to 15 percent cannot expect to win any seat there. Probably one seat or two seats, they may give a fight in Trishur and in Thiruvannathapuram. So this whole thing that South will overwhelmingly vote in favor of Congress is not something which I will buy. Because in Andhra, Congress is not there. In Telangana, they would definitely gain. In Karnataka, because of the alliance which NDA has put across, I don't think there would be major gains for the Congress party. In Tamil Nadu, we have to wait and see. Uh, I wanted to ask you the question how this uh, the five state election is going to have an impact on the 2024 general election. But anyway, you have partly covered in the south. How it will have an impact in the northern belt? So, see, I think, you know, in the last uh, 2018 season, BJP had lost these elections. I have been repeatedly saying that these elections are not semi finals. The real semi final are the 2022 March election, the five state election. Because if you have to win Delhi, the route to Delhi is always through Lucknow. Once BJP has been able to win solidly in Uttar Pradesh, I think that sets the narrative. This only gives the confidence to BJP and its Karyakartas that yes, having resoundingly won in these three states, they will be going into 2024 with an advantage. Sir, I find uh, both in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, if the Indi alliance have come together properly, the winning margin of BJP also would have been reduced or the results would have been different. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. I disagree totally with you. Okay. Because, because let me look at both the states. As far as Chhattisgarh is concerned, there is no Indi alliance. There is no other player. It is only the GGP and the BSP. And they were very minuscule. Because BJP has got almost 46.27 percentage of vote share. So in Chhattisgarh, there is no question of... Uh, How about Rajasthan? I'll come to it. I'll come to Rajasthan. As far as Rajasthan is concerned, again, these are all small, small parties. If BJP had been able to put together these small parties, if Congress had been able to put together these small parties, there could have been a change in the results. But not so dramatic, I would say. Because Congress already <laughs> had an alliance with uh, Rashtriya Lokdal, supported the candidate. So, uh, I don't see, because Bahujan Samaj Party anyway is not part of India Alliance. So, there is no other party which is there. So, these are smaller parties <coughs> which are not presently part of India Alliance. So, uh, sir, I don't see it's coming. Uh, from these elections, uh, what are the lessons, two lessons that uh, BJP and Congress should learn out of this uh, uh, these uh, elections? This BJP's, is a final question. BJP's biggest lesson is that when they are announcing the candidate well in advance, at least in those seats where they are weak, their victory chances get better. The Kare Kartas gets active. And that is one thing which BJP would have learned. In fact, in Telangana, in some of the seats, I can even name seats like Sirilingam Pali and Malkata Jigiri, which are all large seats. The B form itself was given on the day of the final day of nomination filing. On the contrary, in Chhattisgarh, in the month of August itself, some of the candidatures were announced, even in Adhya Pradesh. So, one lesson for BJP is, at least in the states where they are not very strong, announcing the candidates well in advance would result <coughs> in a bigger victory. As far as Congress is concerned, they need to find out what is their organizational strength, number one. And number two, more importantly, they have to be very clear in terms of their narrative. In the name of appeasement of minorities, they have alienated and allowed 
indie block partners to make comments like sanadan dharma against sanadan all these things have worked against it so for congress party the road ahead is long particularly in the indi heartland where <coughs> they appear clueless in terms of a fighting an election uh, in fact i find on an average around 40% vote share congress is having in the see in, the in a two world. party in a two party democracy when one party gets 49% or 48% or 47% the other party is consolidating and getting 40% now they can't go to the town saying that bro beating that we have got 40% now in madhya pradesh bjp had almost got 49 in chatisgarh the bjp had got 47 so what is happening is the third party is being elbow elbowed out there is no space for play people like samajwadi party bahujan samaj party as a result of which congress is gaining but these gains cannot be for eternal they will have to work on their organizational strength otherwise these odds odds can go back they are not getting the swing voters the swing voters mm-hmm. are very important and they are not getting swing voters that means you mean to say got, the, uh, you mean to say that that the 40% votes they are having it in their pocket but not converted into a, a real seats yeah because, because of their lack of uh, uh ground uh, organizational uh, strength organizational strength organizational strength if they concentrate on the organizational strength that they can uh, uh, give a tough fight much more see, tough fight and yeah when, <laughs> when they lose the organizational strength they actually do not get back take the case of up and bihar they lost the organizational strength several years back they need to get back in madhya pradesh rajasthan and chatisgarh the alternative for bjp is only congress now even in gujarat the alternative for congress was only bjp was only congress but aam aadmi party came and you know how much the vote share of congress fell down so uh, if congress does not build an organization strength in these days there may be a place for the third party like an aam aadmi party to enter in the long run who will probably walk away with their votes so thank you very much sir you have given a very nice insight uh, of the what has happened and what would is likely to happen in future thank you very much thank you, sir. for joining us in the show it is a great honor for us to thank you very much sir thank you very much sir it was my honor sir.